Good morning. My name is Jane Prine. I'm the interim superintendent for the Scrum School District, and welcome to Rise and Prine. This morning, I have two very important guests with me, our Director of Transportation, Rich Fulmer, and our Food Services Director, Meredith Arsenault. These two have had lots of changes that they have had to navigate so well during this pandemic season, and today we are going to get to know them and their departments better. So, uh, Rich, what has been the best piece of advice you've ever been given? And share it with us a time that you use that advice. So I think the best advice I've been given is to control my day and not let it control me. Um, I start my day with a list of things to do. Uh, and then uh, from there, I, I don't have to think about that all day long. So I just kind of play off that list all day. That is a great piece of advice. I, I love that you can control your day and your day doesn't control you. I'm going to remember that because sometimes I feel like my day controls me. All right, Meredith, how about you? What has been the best piece of advice you've been given? And share with us a time that you've used that advice. So for me, I would say the best advice I received was from a dear friend. And it had to do with going back to the past to not ever go back to the past. You can use the past for your future, depending on what you are needing, but the past is always the past. And I would say, for me, the past also, people hold on to it because of fear, of the unknown, of things that maybe they haven't done and they don't know what it's going to look like. And I can say, for me... When I took my first job in food service, I took a risk because I've never done food service before. And it was interesting because I was given opportunities to do other jobs. And I started at a food service worker in the kitchen and I moved up and I moved up and I'm here where I am today as the food service director because I took the fear out of the equation. I moved into um, positions knowing there were going to be challenges and knowing that I didn't know what I was getting into, but I did them because I didn't want to go back to the past. So for me, that would be my experience. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I think we all have a first day at our job somewhere along the way that lead us to where we are today. So great. Thank you. All right, Rich, what are one or two highlights um, in your department that you are most proud of? So recently this year, I'm, I'm really proud of our staff. Um, they've been able to uh, adapt, and um, transportation is a very time-sensitive uh, process, and three to five minutes will make a huge difference in a day. Um, it really shows their professionalism. They've been able to uh, adapt to situations quickly that we normally wouldn't otherwise have to deal with on a normal year. So uh, that's been a big one. Also the sanitization of uh, sanitizing the buses, um, the new protocols in play for um, the way that we uh, move around at the transportation department. There's quite a few of us there. Uh, so we've had to make a lot of, you know, a lot of changes there um, and they've done really well at Good. Thank you. And you know, it has been the the cleaning protocols have been just astronomical at every level. And so, and I'm sure three to five minutes makes a big difference. So we need to get those buses sanitized and out. And, um, you know, we were just talking earlier before we had the podcast that five minutes does make a difference whether students are in school on time or whether they are five minutes late to school. So, we appreciate um, the fact that you are so willing to work with us on time schedules and cleaning and um, getting our kiddos on the bus and to school on time. So thank you. Meredith, what are one or two bright spots in a food service that you're most proud of? So I would say that my bright spots are my team. All of them together make one bright spot. And for me, I would say the resilience that my team coming together has done. They have had to change the way they've fed kids and they do it with resilience and they understand what it is to serve the community. And by changes, we have 
done drop-offs for families when we haven't had students in school and so that they can pick up the food that they would normally get at school. We have Friday bags that go home with students. We give them lunches if they only stay a half a day. We give them breakfast. We, Yes, the way that we are doing business has certainly changed in food service, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you. All righty. What are three of your favorite authors, Rich? And I know three is a lot, <laughs> but it kind of gives us a picture of who you are and why those authors are your favorites. Well, truth be told, I, I don't read for recreation. Um, I never really have. So um, I, I read a lot of um, self-help type books. I, I read a lot of data in my profession um, in order to keep current in uh, vehicles. So most of my time is spent reading in the morning on problems that I'm going to be facing that day with a vehicle or a uh, procedure that we need to you know do um, I I like to read um, just things that will help me in the business that we are in you know and, and that's probably the extent of it for my reading well I just appreciate the fact that you are up on manuals and things that need to be addressed with our transportation because we are transporting our students and you're the first person you you and your bus drivers are the first person our kiddos see so thank you thank safety you. always is first and so i appreciate you spend your time reading those manuals and meredith what are your favorite authors and uh three of your favorite authors and why well my first i would say my top favorite author is c.s lewis and c.s lewis has written a lot of books including the chronicles of narnia which for me, when I read those books, the books he writes, my mind can see what he's saying and it paints a picture. So for me, I connect very well with C.S. Lewis. Another book that I like is actually about somebody and it's The Peace Pilgrim. And the book was actually written by friends and people who came in contact with her. And it's about how she shared peace within the country. She walked across the country many times and met many people. And I would say for the third, I had a challenge with that because I really like philosophical books, things I can learn and grow from. And so for me, I like to see things that I can read and connect with and really, as Rich said, learn more about who I am. Good. Thank you. Well, those sound like um, all great avenues for uh, growth. So, Rich, um, final question. What changes have you made in your transportation department during this COVID-19 pandemic that have helped you navigate and has moved the department forward? Well, I think our, again, cleaning protocol has been a big step uh, this year in um, not necessarily for COVID in the future, but just to, I think we'll be able to carry that on from here on out and, and um, maybe cut down on some of the colds and flus that we normally uh, end up with in a, you know, in a year. Um, I think that makes a big, it's made a big difference, I think, right now. And that was going to be one of my questions. Are we going to continue with these astronomical cleaning uh, protocols in the future? Because it, it's really just good hygiene for all of us to keep our buses um, sanitized to the level that they are currently. Right. We've, we've gotten a system down pretty well, I think. So I'm hopeful we'll be able to keep that going. Good. One of the things that I've often wondered in this pandemic era is when we're out of the pandemic, will anybody take their masks off even if we're all vaccinated? I don't know. I'm, I'm uncomfortable going in a store where people don't have masks on. So <laughs> or do they have them below their nose? I want to go, excuse me, put that mask on. Um, Meredith, over to you and food service. What changes, you have made multiple changes um, in your food service department during this COVID-19 pandemic that have helped you navigate. Can you explain what those changes are and what you plan to keep with those changes? So for us, we, we've made changes within our team. And when I say that, I mean that how we communicate has changed. Everybody, I want my team to know that everybody knows everything so that one person 
isn't in the dark and that if something happens to one staff member, then another staff member can step in. So for us, the communication part has definitely been the big change um, internally. Externally, I would say um, prepackaging food items, how we take food out to classrooms, how we serve kids has definitely changed. And for next year, I, I'm not sure what our food program is going to look like. We're still going to be here to feed kids, but what that's going to look like, I just don't know. And that brings me to another point, you know, um, hopefully in the not too distant future, we'll all be back in our buildings and going about business as normal. But I wonder how normal that business will be after the last year and a half that we've been through. So I just want to say thank you to both of you. And I just want to say a public shout out because our food service and our transportation departments are some of the backbone of the entire district. So thank you very much. Join us next week as we start a new series called State of Our Schools. Thank you for listening and have a fantastic Friday, Squim. Squim.